previously on Zomboid. It was my second attempt at this difficult world involving cold weather, stricter resources, sprinting zombies, and an ever-increasing population of zombies as well. Every 20 days in this world, it got progressively harder to a point where you didn't even want to leave your house. As well as, I needed to kill 5,000 zombies by day 100. For a while, this was going great, but at day 30, I was overwhelmed by the ever-increasing population of sprinting zombies. And unfortunately, due to a few errors and tripping on my ass, I was overwhelmed by them. And ultimately, I was unable to escape. This is going to be my second attempt at this challenge. Remember, while this world will not start incredibly overbearing, it will get to a point where leaving your house, even for a few minutes, will basically be a death sentence. It will start with a ton of difficult factors, such as the cold, sprinting zombies, an ever-increasing population of zombies, pitch black night, and overall, a lowered resource pool. This involves food, guns, cars, tools, and everything else. However, this time, I'm lowering the amount of zombie kills I need from 5,000 to 2,000, as 5,000 seems to be incredibly difficult. I would go up to day 60 and still be having to kill them. But the question is, can I survive 100 days? For the first 20 days, I call it the grace period. This will allow me to have some advantages for the first 20 days, to allow me to get set up and get some resources going, as well as helping me get some of the initial 2,000 kills that I need. So for the next 20 days, it's going to be a balancing game of building a base, gathering resources, and getting kills before the challenge gets even more difficult. For the first little while, multi-hit will be turned on and infection off. Sprinters are an incredibly difficult thing to deal with. If you have multi-hit off, more than two sprinters is essentially a death sentence. They will stun lock you. And if infection is on, it takes one slip up with these multiple sprinters to essentially just lose everything. So for the first little while, these are going to be my advantages. And I must utilize them to help me get 2,000 kills, get a base set up, and obtain enough resources to live through the 100 days. Multi-hit will be disabled at day 40, and infection will be turned on at day 60. This may seem easy on paper, but believe me, this is absolutely necessary. In a future challenge, I'm sure we will enable it from the start, but Jesus, insane population setting with sprinters is abysmal. You'll see that soon. The profession I will be taking is Mechanic. A mod I have allows me to enable Burglar with Mechanic, meaning that not only can I access cars easily, but can maintain them which will be useful as cars will be rather scarce. As well as the fact that surviving 100 days on one car is just not really feasible. After debuffing myself to utter hell, I managed to get some of the most necessary perks I find, which is being strong, I will have level 10 strength, level 6 fitness, as well as an ability to utilize that strength to carry even more with my pack mule, gym gore, which makes exercise fatigue incredibly low, it will also give me an extra strength point that I will have level 10 strength. I will also be taking a perk that allows me to regain 100% HP if I'm ever lower to 15%, meaning that I can survive at least one onslaught of being surrounded by zombies, and took some perks that allowed me to counteract unhappiness and boredom. I spawned into Maldra once again. It's the area I seem to know best. After checking my injuries and my dynamic traits, if you don't know what that is, you can gain buffs and debuffs depending on your health and mood statuses. For example, if you're incredibly depressed, you will need to sleep a lot more and sleep will be a lot less effective. Or, if you're incredibly strong, you will gain thick skinned, meaning that it is slightly harder for a bite to break the skin. If you spend a lot of time anxious, you will gain nervous wreck, and so on and so forth. This means that taking good care of your health means that you will have a very powerful character, and if you are neglecting, you will suffer. Anyway, after doing all of that, I watched the TV show, gained a little bit of cooking skill, and then searched around my house. In this house, I got a can opener, a book, a tailoring skill book, and some bandages. But other than that, really nothing. Oh, there was fuck all in here apart from a book and some can openers. Then I went outside and found some cool clothing. Samurai bomber jacket? War? I don't think I've ever seen this before. A leg warmers? El Femboy? Very cool. Okay. 
Bonk. Ooh, digital watch. After killing my first five zombies, I found some goodies on a body. Very cool. After making my way inside, I found a bit of food and my first, albeit useless, weapon. It's a knife. Might as well grab it. This weapon is going to be more useful for the fact that I kind of need to have a weapon, otherwise I get really anxious due to my debuff known as Betrayed. If I am not holding a weapon, I will progressively get more anxious and unhappy. Farm warmers. Damn, I'm just going full-blown femboy with this. Who would have thought? I continued to search around the house, found some magazines, a metal working book, and then found a first aid kit. Interesting. Well, that would be really good, actually. Ducky. Shoot up. Oh, that's so good. Oh, I can get like denim trips now. Oh, that's a rosin. What did he say? Oh, fuck. Oh. A needle. That's fucking perfect. I can actually tailor. Unlike the previous playthroughs, I never got needles and shit, so I could like never fix up my clothing. Perishables are good, I guess. I had searched quite a few houses at this rate, and I really needed something reliable to hit shit with, and I just simply couldn't find it. Plenty of food, but that's about it. I wanted to check and see if there was anything within the car, in the glove box for example, but uh, I made a small error. Oh, cool. Love that. Just gotta let them pass, I guess. Oh fuck, please, oh, I can't keep doing this. After triggering multiple alarms and searching a ton of houses for what felt like a century, I found my first weapon. Or, well, I guess you could call it that. I can't use it, but... I then went to go rest in a house. I was so exhausted from running around and stomping on zombies. However, this game just didn't want me to have a break. Enough, please. And finally just fucking sit, Jesus Christ. I tell you, trying to kill all these zombies without the actual weapon is pissing me off. I'm wasting so much time because I'm having to sit and push zombies for an hour every two houses. It's so bad. Fuck off, bro. You're kidding me? I'm getting more guns and I'm getting maybe... Like, it's... it's uh, I've got an extra backpack, I guess. As nice as it is to have a few guns, one of them doesn't have ammo, and the Magnum will probably attract about 700 zombies to my location, so... I mean, what am I really supposed to do with it right now? I have searched for the entire day, and I still only have a kitchen knife to deal with these zombies currently, and I don't want to use loud guns. I am constantly in a state of exhaustion from pushing, running, and stomping, and the pitch black night is coming, so I'm afraid my first day is going to be without a decent melee weapon. I was too tired, too exhausted to go out and do anything else, and there was a ton of zombies outside, so I called it a night there. Day 2 started exactly how you expected it to, with a ton of zombies charging me off the get-go. I decided to kill two birds with one stone, avoiding the zombies chasing me and trying to find a new melee weapon. So I jumped over the fence into the garage area, hoping to find maybe a wrench or something so that I could finally beat something up. Unfortunately, avoiding zombies is just apparently impossible. Fortunately, having level 10 strength has its perks, and I can push these idiots over instantaneously. Jesus, there's nothing I can't want to do. There's no weapons. Eventually, it got to the point where I was just sick of risking my life every interaction. So I pulled out my little blicky and decided to say, Fuck it, I'm gonna shoot you. So this doesn't attract too much attention. If you remember, I did take the shooter perk. I have level 1 aiming. I find this just ultimately necessary because at level 0 aiming is genuinely like pulling your own teeth out. 
fuck off. No way. As expected, a ton of zombies showed up due to the gunfire. Not as many as I thought there would be, but still a few. Unfortunately, I couldn't access most of the garages. I didn't have an axe to cut down the doors, and anything that was left open, there was nothing really within it. So I began to search elsewhere. Yeah, food's nice and all, but... I'm not starving, mate. I need a weapon immediately that I don't attract a thousand zombies to me every time I fucking leave the house. A very peculiar thing is that I'm actually getting a lot of food, which is weird because it's the thing I actually have on the most rare setting. That's kind of useful at least. I then stumbled upon a boarded up house. Often enough, this is a survivor house, which can contain melee weapons and everything else. However, if it's anything like my previous survivor houses, I'm more than likely to get nothing. But it's worth checking. And they're bashing on the things now, so hopefully they'll make it through there and get rid of the barricades for me. While the zombie bashes down the barricade for me, I have no melee so I can't do it myself, I looted around elsewhere. I got some food and then found a zombie with some pretty decent clothing. It's got some good armor at least. And a vest now. Four or so hours later, I came back to the house and it was finally open. Get down, bitch. Get down, bitch. Thank you. Doesn't give me much hope. Oh. I guess a, a hiking... a bigger backpack is good. I, I just don't really need it. I've got a lot of food. I just need a really... <laughs> fuck. I have found propane, propane torches and magnums before I have found a melee weapon. Oh, fuck me. Oh, would you look at that? An even larger backpack. <laughs> I found the best backpack in the game before I have found a melee. Freeze fucking... Thank you. Just from foraging around the houses alone, I was able to find like a week's worth of food. Which is really amazing, especially because I'm on that insanely rare setting. But I really need a melee weapon, an axe especially. This food will go rotten very soon. I need something more permanent and sustaining. Fortunately, I got a blessing from the gods and found a box of ammo for my gun that I was using. I won't quite be dying yet. My aiming skill is going to be through the roof at this rate. Fuck off, bro, I knew it. Using the gun every time attracts at least five or six or even seven zombies, but ultimately it's better than spending my entire stamina bar killing them and stomping them, so take the bad with the good. After nearly two full days, I finally found my first reliable melee. It seems in general that my luck was beginning to turn around. After searching about 14 different cars, I actually found one with a functioning engine, somewhat, and something with even like a tiny bit of fuel. It's not much, but it'll get me to a gas station, and this will make life just so much easier. I might actually survive past day 10 with this. Fortunately, the gas station was quite close, and I wasted no time getting there. And now it was time to clear out and fill up. Luckily, we found this hammer, so I won't have to attract a hundred zombies on the main street to my location. Um... After dealing with the hordes coming from the street, I was finally able to fuel up my car. This is going to open up a lot of opportunities for us. Oh, 
Holy shit, this thing is fast. If you watched my previous video, you know I based here last time. It was a good place and I want to retry it. It's a good protected area near the main road. I won't have to travel far if I ever want to get places. Why is there like 7,000 going? After two days of consistent fighting and looting, I was finally able to have a rest. I had my base location set, and now I just had to build and set up for the next 98 days. Whilst a few things were quite rare, such as the books and the mechanic stuff I need, weapons in general were quite rare, there wasn't a lot of ammo around, there was no melee weapons, I got a single hammer, but food was very generous, and it's weird because it was the thing I had on insanely rare. I genuinely feel like I messed up the settings, <laughs> but, but I didn't. However, it may seem like a lot of food, it's not going to last too long, especially because I have to keep an eye on my calories as well. I'm afraid you can't sustain a good diet off of canned carrots for very long. Tomorrow, we had a big day ahead of us. Would it be a simply fishy playthrough if I wasn't waking up and having to fucking kill things every morning? You kidding me? Love a beat down in the morning. As with the previous playthrough, the house that I stay at is nearby a farm that is there by default. This is useful as it will be the main source of food that I have for the next mm, month or so, I want to say. Whilst the food I collected was quite generous, especially in comparison to some of the other runs I've done, it won't be enough, so this will sustain me until I can get a farm going. This will be more than enough for me to get some farm set up. Shortly after, I went to go get some shelves because I needed somewhere to put my books. Early organization was going to be a bit necessary. If you remember my last playthrough, it was bloody messy. Uh, not a massive collection of books, but some here are really necessary, so I'm quite happy. Anyway, it was back to the streets. Uh, we're going on a looting adventure. We need axes and all sorts of stuff, so... It was time to begin. Ooh, another generator. What the fuck? I mean, if, if I ever get 308, that's really good. I'm gonna keep that here, though. I don't want to carry that around. I've seen a lot of these big ammo canisters in, like, survivor houses and, like, police stations. But for just a bunch of ammo to be spawning in, like, a tool shed, I, I've never seen this before. Very lucky. If I ever end up with a 308 weapon, I will definitely be able to use it for a long time with this. Oh, double holster, very good. Actually, maybe attach this, and then... It was at this point I realized I think pistols were going to be the main source of firepower I was ever going to have in this. Rifle ammo is very limited. Uh, you will very, very, very rarely find it on zombies. And melee weapons were set to extremely rare, so this isn't something that was ever going to commonly find. However, pistol rounds, mostly 9x9 and 45 ACP, was something that you could probably find one box of every 50 to 100 zombies. So this would probably be the main source of power I'm going to have, which is kind of unfortunate. I really hope I find a silencer for this, as if I have an insane population, and the sprinter population increases that as well, shooting one bullet essentially could be a death sentence, so here's hoping. I did find another weapon. It's a short blade, so it's not exactly the best thing to have, and it will break pretty quickly, but hey, I'll take what I can get. After looting the zombies, I checked out the car mechanic shop. Uh, basically found really nothing here. Very specific things for specific cars. Couldn't really use any of it. And then moved up to the garages. There was a small horde here, but nothing I couldn't handle. But it simply wouldn't be a looting session with Fishy. A fucking alarm didn't go off. Ugh, fuck's sake. And so, of course, I had to cancel the plans on looting there, but I'll be back later.
First things first, the alarm was really near my house, so that does mean I have to deal with a lot of zombies coming my way. That takes priority currently. All I'm saying is, I'm glad the sprinter population was low right now. You may think 5% isn't a lot, but it really builds up quickly. Every horde of like 20 or 30, you're dealing with like 4 or 5. And if you stumble upon the main street, it's so fucked. You'll see in later days, when it gets to 15 and 30, that you genuinely have to have eyes on the back of your head. A little while later, I found another special, cool little item. Oh shit, right, we're getting somewhere. But this was still a short blade weapon, so it wasn't fantastic, and it tends to break down pretty quick. But the damage on this one was very high, so hey, that's something. After several hours, I went back to the garages to check and see if the zombies had dissipated or to see what the situation was like. Unfortunately, the place was still surrounded. There was a lot of them here. So this was going to be a pretty tough battle to get this done, but I had faith. So long as I had ammo in my pistol, I should be fine. When it comes to these large hordes, the problem comes from the sprinters. All it takes is one of them to come up from behind you. With infection on, it's basically just an instant loss as soon as they are, but even without infection, they just stun lock you for so long. And having to be so close to kill them with a pistol, it just basically means it's game over. Hence why I say, you need eyes on the back of your head. With cold weather and sprinters enabled, it essentially means zombies travel at fucking light speed and the cold lowers your attack speed and movement speed. So every couple of hits, you basically have to do a 360 to make sure nothing's crawling up behind you. You have died at least 20 times doing these worlds because of one sprinter doing that. So if you ever attempt a world like this with cold weather and sprinters, make sure every two to four hits you're checking the area behind you because they will be on top of you in mere seconds. After spending most of the day basically gutting through the zombies, I checked their corpses, was able to replenish some of the bullets that I spent, fortunately, not as much as I lost, but still, and then began searching the factories, praying for an axe. This might be useful. Very nice. I got lots of goodies, but unfortunately there was no axe, and not having an axe limits the amount of loot I can get from these places. I'm really relying on a zombie dropping one, or just stumbling on it somehow. And that concludes day three. Somewhat productive, I'd like to say. As usual, I woke up at 6am, I cooked some bacon and began disinfecting rags in the off chance I took some damage, whether that's from a fall or from a bite. Hopefully not that second one though. The day before, I attempted to get into the garages, but unfortunately there was no axe, so I decided to move to the factory above it. It was a massive warehouse, and it didn't have any locked doors, it was a bunch of crates. This was definitely going to be my best chance at the tools that I needed. Unfortunately, however, it's usually a populated area, so I had to be careful.
I arrived at the factory. I got some bits and bobs, like a WD-40, useful for repairing weapons. There's a bunch of useless junk as well. Some more seeds for future planting, which is always, always useful. Oh, thank god. This factory was actually the most generous building I've had yet. A couple of extra weapons to use later on. I could finally begin chopping down these garage doors. For the most part, these garages were kind of useless, but there was one box that I was a big fan of. After all that, it was time for life and living. Level two and a half. Not bad. I am aware that speeding it up apparently lowers the amount of XP you get from this show. I know that now, I didn't know this then. So thank you for your lovely comments reminding me that. That's been here the entire time. Damn. As with all these playthroughs before this one, eventually the time comes where you have to attack the police station. Weapons and ammo are fundamentally important, and I just can't live without them. It comes with its risks, but it is worth it. I didn't want to break my car running all of them over, and I didn't really feel like getting out. This is a lot of zombies to be taking on. So like before, I began driving down the road to lure them away from the police station. I spent a good while doing this. As I drove, I made sure to kill the sprinters with the car, so that when I drove back up, they wouldn't be following me, and left the shamblers down the road. After an in-game hour, I arrived back at the police station, and it was looking a lot more friendly. dealing with the stragglers of the horde, I headed inside. I began searching the locker room. I had some very cool clothing and armor in here, which I was very lucky to find. Mostly the carrier vest, which is an additional 4 carry space. Not much, but good. And a bulletproofed SWAT vest, which is good for bullet, bite, and scratch. Hmm. Also within the station, there was a SWAT zombie who had a bunch of cool armor. It wasn't too much protection, but it actually provided a fair bit of bite resistance all around the body. So I swatted it all up. That was terrible. However, the SWAT armor wasn't even the best part of this. Okay, look, I know what you're thinking. Fishy, this isn't very low-resource, hardcore, insane challenge of you to have this many weapons in a fucking PlayStation. These are the same, actually, these are rarer settings than I had on previously from the past two runs. You'll remember if you watched the previous video, the first run I ever done, I didn't get a single weapon out of this place. In the second run, I only got a submachine gun with 15 rounders. It took me to find another survivor house for bigger weapons. And I've just found more weapons in this police station than I have in the past two runs. Believe me, I don't know what the fuck I done. I must have just got really lucky this particular run. Regardless... This is going to give me actual advantage to win one of these 100 day challenges. So yay. Hopefully I don't die on day 30 again. Oh, okay. Um, damn. No, wait, I have a ton of runs for that at home. Shit. This is kind of useless, but these two are great. And that's really good as well. Hmm. Something doesn't seem right here. How did I go from only getting a shotgun and an SMG, one SMG, to getting all of this solvent trap adapter so I can actually make a, a silencer for my pistol as well? I was so baffled by this, I've actually went onto Reddit to look it up. Apparently, apparently this is kind of normal. I put it on like a rare setting, not like it, like insanely rare, but still quite rare. But um, apparently guns are supposed to be quite common. It's ammo that's the problem. Though I did get a lot of guns, I only got ammo for about two of them. Shotgun ammo I didn't have too much of, as you can see here. But the 5.56 and the 308 I have back at home, it means I will have some ammo. It probably won't be enough to last me 100 days, but I'm expecting to get to about day 60 or 70 before that's a problem. And at least I'll still have my pistol. Although, in the later days when zombies have double HP, it may make pistols useless, but we'll deal with that when we get there. After a day of killing and looting, 
very successfully, I arrived home. The first thing I wanted to do was turn the solvent trap adapter into a silencer. This means that I can actually use pistols without attracting zombies in like a hundred block radius. So this is really good for me. Last playthrough, I died trying to find one of these. So this means a lot to find it on day four, especially. I missed you. Now I have more guns than I know what to do with. Like I went from like actually like one shotgun in my mate, like my first playthrough to an SMG in the armory. And now I don't even ever need to like touch an armory again. I just need to make sure I have enough ammo. And even then I have a sound for my pistol. That's all I'm going to need ever. Jesus. On day 5, I woke up at 3am, extremely anxious because I didn't go to bed with my gun out. Yes, that is a sentence you just heard. <sighs> I missed having a silencer. Using the axe I found, I began to open all the areas that I could not before. Within this little shed, I found a large gas can, a extinguisher, which I don't think I've actually seen before, and a couple of other bits and bobs. What gun was this? Whatever it is, it's a very powerful gun. I'll remember it. After searching around for a little bit, and finding some cool things in that shed, I began to trade my mechanics. It was going to be a necessary skill since cars weren't too common. Oh, fuck off. And then it was time for woodcraft, and I know I sped it up, I know I am sorry, it is painful for you veterans, I know. But shortly after, I began looting other cars for their engine parts and their hoods. The front of my car was pretty fucked up at this rate, and I would have to replace these parts if I ever wanted to continue driving it. But after searching for a little while, I found a very healthy car. It was small and didn't have a very large boot. And yes, I said boot. You Americans didn't approve of my comment last video. I apologize. But it was still a nice car, so I wanted to take it back. Unfortunately, this brought a lot of attention, so I cleared them out. Here, Jesus. When I was planning these settings, I'm just very glad I chose ammo rarity to be the one I chose instead of making it even more rare, because I don't know how I'd be able to do this if it was any more rare than it currently was. I was barely maintaining the runs that I had. Even the revolver I was using took like two to four shots to kill one zombie, so like, Jesus, yeah. I had spent the majority of the day clearing out zombies, but since I was finally done with it, I was able to loot the bookstore, and this was going to be really necessary, as I need carpentry books really badly. Unfortunately, there was no carpentry books here that I needed. I already had the level 3 one, and there was nothing else I really needed from here. I took a few of them, but ultimately, I just needed carpentry. The bookstore is fucking useless. After a pretty successful day of getting kills and some books, it was time to call it a day. I'll take this then, and we will loot the, the houses down here looking for carpentry books. It was time to begin building my base up. I needed carpentry books to build water collectors, and I needed garbage bags in order to build them. So that was my priority. I also need garbage bags, that's good. Uh, water's not too bad to worry about, um, donuts. Because there's just so many water dispensers around. Why am I getting so much food? Okay. This is worrying, I'm getting so much food every time uh, I enter a house on this run. The only thing I'm lacking is melee weapons, otherwise this would be like a vanilla run practically to me. I haven't dated a woman since I was born, mate. Uh, it's a lot better in fantasy than it is in reality. <laughs> It was approaching 12 o'clock, and that is carpentry show time, so I had to rush to a TV. Carpentry! Go, 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 go! I'm gonna fucking... Come on, 
Oh, it's online from the thing. Okay, cool. Just to make sure. Yeah, good. We're good. Never miss carpentry. Be easy to live out here. That's a boarded up house, actually. Even more, you fuckers. Fuck off, that knight broke instantly. Jesus. It's so true. Fuck. Please fucking die. Jesus. Thank you. Ooh, big. Big. I need axes. Yeah, this was kind of useless, but we got an axe out of it. A little more looting later. Finally got it. Carpenter level 2, that's exactly what we fucking needed, actually. Upon arriving home, I was able to read the books finally, and we can begin leveling carpentry. Uh, and we need electricity. This book's taking a long time, Jesus. There we go, one in the morning. We're balling. We got all the books we needed done. That was a good day, I would say. Walk shoe. Oh, there's an alarm going on. Air raid siren. Oh yeah. Um, let's try chopping down some trees. Extremely extravagant game plan. Can I hit the fucking tree, please? Thank you. Today was the day I was building a wall around my house. I needed security so that I could place down farms. And, well, security for not getting bitten as soon as I leave my house. Securing a perimeter was essential for my water collectors, for the farms, if you leave them unattended, zombies will trample them. So it was the long and really boring process of building a wall. Pretty much the entire day consisted of me hitting trees and placing log walls. Really nothing too much to report. Day 8 started much the same as well. Excuse me, you have a fucking axe in you. What is that? Fiskar splitting mole. Well, thanks for bringing me a fucking badass weapon. Later in the day, I discovered something tragic. And the water's out. Motherfucker, that's the eighth day. Oh man, I don't even have water collectors yet. This is gonna be rough. For most of the day, I was using the new axe I found to help me cut down trees for the walls, etc. I did say it was going to take multiple days, so... That was pretty much it for this day. Nothing too dramatic apart from the water shutting out. Oh, fuck. Nor. It was in that direction. I'm gonna go find it. On the ninth day, I was rudely awakened with a care package. Unfortunately, I was sleeping through it, so I didn't have any notification to tell me where it was. So unfortunately, I was running around like a headless chicken trying to find this package that didn't exist anymore. I'm already exhausted, bro. Fuck's sake. Ah, uh, fuck the care package then. I can't find it. Later in the day, I went to go find some nails. I went back to the old garages I was at at the start of the world to open up the garages with the axe I found. After multiple hours of searching, I didn't find any nails. I found some useful little things, like a car battery charger, but like, it's not really what I needed. A useful, not really what I need. Early in the morning on day 10, it was time to go to another warehouse type of area. I still need the nails and I can't progress until I've got them. The chain link fence to the facility was blocked off. I had to jump over quickly due to the amount of zombies that were behind me. There was a major build up at the fence and I didn't realise how quickly this fence was going to fall. I went to go kill some of the zombies before they broke in, but I didn't realise how quickly they already broke it down. I almost met my end, but fortunately my perk saved me, and I managed to dodge an attack. I did. 
desperately needed to get away from the horde. I was bleeding heavily, and I needed to stop it immediately. Unfortunately, with the injuries I sustained, melee was no longer a viable option to kill large hordes, so I decided to get the hell out of there. I drove far away enough so that most of the horde couldn't follow me. There was a fence separating me and the zombies, so I could very easily take care of them. I wasn't giving up on the nails quite yet. With an incredibly large horde just below me, shooting them was not a good idea, but with only four of them, even with the injuries, using my axe on them was efficient enough. 45 ACP, thank god, bro. Ugh. With some 45 ACP rounds, I could now use my silenced pistol to finish off some of the horde. I decided to leave my car behind as it attracts too many zombies. I walked on foot to deal with the hordes one by one. Even with multi-hit on, the injuries made this process just so fucking slow. At long last, the battle was over, and I finally found what I needed. Nails, yay! I got a ton of goodies in here, I even got a sledgehammer. I don't think we found one previously in any of our other playthroughs, which is pretty cool. A ton of nails. Just what I needed. After that somewhat successful day, didn't die at least, I began to make my way home. Of course it wouldn't be a successful day without a welcoming party when I get home. I used all my 45 ACP, but fortunately I saved up a lot of 9mm from the bodies I found. How does this even happen? For some obscure reason, the zombies spent all day bashing on my doors and windows, so I had to repair all of them. Oh also, have you ever tried to take down trees with hand injuries? Yeah, it's fucking awful. On the bright side though, with these nails, I was finally able to board up my house. So no more of these window crashers coming into my house. What are collectors and barricaded? Things were looking great, this was probably one of my best runs yet. I still have my second life, quote unquote, a bunch of guns, I've got my water collector set up, I've got a wall going, I've got great armour, food's looking good and it'll be enough to get me through until my farm's done, and I even have a needle and a bunch of materials to be able to repair my armour. This is probably the best run I've had yet. I'm looking forward to seeing how far I get. If you've made it this far into the video, perhaps you're enjoying it. If that's the case, please give me a subscription, a like, or a comment. This helps me out greatly, and can allow me to continue to make videos for you. And if you're feeling generous enough, hop into the Twitch, Discord, or even subscribe to the Patreon. Or even become a member on this channel down below. My content will always be free, but without support, I can't continue to make it. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. On day 11, I began plans for farms. Farming is essential. It's hard to do, but the rewards you reap are incredible. This was going to be my main source of food during this playthrough. Bing Jolene. Nothing really happened on this day. I farmed a bit, and then I grabbed the water dispenser from the local garage. Clean water is always useful to have, obviously. Fuck, it's too heavy for inventory. <laughs> This is very eerily close to what I basically done in my last playthrough. Water dispenser, yay. Day 11, done. 
Fuck me, nine mil. Oh. Nine millimeter couldn't fucking kill a baby bunny. Fuck me. Day 12 began with some general looting runs. I was looking for more books, annotated maps, and everything in general. I especially needed garbage bags. Farms took a lot of water, and it requires a lot of rain collectors. Hi. Hey, Joe, how you doing, buddy? Hit the fucking deck! Hit the fucking deck! Hit the fucking deck! Okay. We be hiding. Oh, no. There was a great amount of zombies outside, or at least that's what I thought. All I could hear was their mumbling, so I was kind of scared to leave. I'm just gonna let them pass. Oh, no. Go, go, go. For the rest of the day, I pretty much just spent my time killing zombies. I decided to make the best use of these early days, as later on, the zombies are going to be incredibly strong, and ammo is going to get even more scarce until eventually the zombies just stop spawning it overall. So, I better make use of it now. How many did I kill today? A hundred, Jesus. After slaughtering a ton of them, I grabbed a generator I found in a shed and decided to take it home. Soon, power was going to go out, so I had to be prepared. Here. Very good. Great. I'm gonna just give them the London style. Blood could tank that, Jesus Christ. I did not mean to jump up there, but whatever. Day 12, done. Oh my fucking... Jesus Christ. <clears throat> After being scared to death by zombies at my front door, I now planted a bunch of fertilizer in my plants. The only thing I can think of that is more boring than placing log walls around your base is watering your plants. It is the longest and most boring process of anything, but it has to be done. But shortly after doing that, I took some beta blockers to read a book to get rid of my anxiety, and then my carpentry book. <laughs> Much like the previous episode, uh, I began to dismantle fences to get my carpentry skill up. I needed to make stairs so I could make a lookout for the zombies bashing on my walls. I'd done this literally the entire day. Uh, I was almost where I needed to be, so I'll have to do a bit extra tomorrow, unfortunately. However, it was going to have to wait, as my priority for day 14 is getting fuel for the generator. Day 14 is usually when the power goes out, so I'm expecting it to go out either today or tomorrow. So it was time to go down the main street, get some kills for the 2000 kill count I needed, and then fill up on fuel. I spent most of my morning basically slowly driving down and then taking out the zombies one by one so that I wouldn't have to deal with them all at once once I got to the petrol station. After spending about six to seven hours killing zombies to get my fuel, it was time to head back. Once I got back, I fueled it up, and so we are now ready for when the power inevitably goes out. Once that was all settled, I was back to hitting the fences to finish off leveling my carpentry. I needed those stairs as soon as possible. We done it. Level six. Lovely. 
after getting a basic sort of balcony out to look over the area, it was time to call it a day. A very successful day, I'd like to say. I know it looks scuffed having this little bit <laughs> poking out, but it's the only way I can actually shoot the zombies that are hitting the wall. So I prefer productivity to looking nice, I guess. <laughs> However, I do have a idea for this. You'll see that probably in a later video or later in this video. Oh, and on cue, by the way. Good thing I set up that generator the night before. For most of this day, this was basically just base upgrades. Cutting trees and making staircases and more balcony bits. Planning for the future of the world. I continued to build up the base and get a sort of fortification around it and a shooting floor so that if any zombie approached, I could kill them from all angles. All the while I'm doing that, I'm being attacked constantly. <laughs> Are we quite done now? Day 16 was basically no different. However, I should mention that one of the mods I have that basically makes backpacks more useful is that I was actually able to upgrade it because my tailoring skill went up. And basically this allows me to have a tiny bit more space in the backpack. It allows me to have more hot bar slots so I can have a bunch of different weapons there, uh, etc. You'll find out later on how useful this is. You can upgrade it up to three times. It's pretty awesome. In other news, I began to build a separate section connected via roofs. This was going to allow me to have a second space for farming, as well as an emergency exit if anything goes wrong. I don't know what it is, but looking through this clip while I'm building in the storm, something just seems so isolating about it. It kind of makes me dread what's to come. Maybe I'm just being a pretentious weirdo though, but hey. Oh, and could you guess what I was doing the next day? Shocking, I know. I was still building. A few days of building later, late into day 19, I needed to make the better water collectors. I wanted to make good use of my garbage bags, and the smaller water collectors were not enough to maintain all the things I needed for water, such as cleaning, and the farms, and for drinking. So I needed to get level 7 carpentry, and a bunch of other garbage bags. These were basically the last few days of the best XP multiplier I was going to have, so I really needed to get level 7 carpentry now, rather than later. Oh, fuck me. Better get fucking home. Ugh. It's midnight. It is time. With the arrival of day 20, my XP multiplier went down, so trying to get level 7 carpentry without a book and on a lower multiplier, it's kind of annoying. Not doing this with a book is pain in the arse. Fuck's sake, I really wish I found level 4 carpentry. Well, even um, Jamie could probably help. Oh, fuck me. I also made a discovery. The revolver I had was actually capable of using the silencer I made. Oh, what a shot. Ooh. That's kind of whack. Uh, though a revolver with six bullets that takes two to four shots to kill a thing is uh, not great. Oh, that was fucking brutal, that. Ah yes, the old familiar patterns of nothing being in the survivor house. That's what I got in my survivor house, is a baseball bat. They want Kate to shave your head. I won't fucking hand it over. I'll do it with you for shit, fuck no. It's not my brand, man. Damn bro, I did it for 25 and a compliment. Yeah, but you are tall and handsome and have your shit together. I'm like just a lost mentally old child. But she's a man of commitment, committed to being a little cutie pie. Fuck. But she's just sexy, I'm not. I'm just a little guy. I'm a little weirdo. I'm a creep. Annotated map. Oh god, we got Moldra map, finally. 
here floorboards. Today I tried to find a lot of garbage bags but unfortunately I didn't find any so day 22 is pretty cut out for me. For day 22 I still look for garbage bags and headed down the street killing zombies for the kill count and then moving to an annotated house. I must have killed at least 70 in this like tiny little area I'm around. For some reason there was just so many. The population multiplier must be doing it because I have no other explanation. Kill one seven more show up. Have we done now? Thank you. After several hours of killing, I finally arrived at the annotated house, and can you guess what happened? Oh, that's been nothing. We were out the entire fucking horde just for that to happen. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I decided to retreat for now. I wanted to grab some food and a bit more ammo. Because they have fucking things in the area. I mean... Dude. Am I just destined to be fucking overwhelmed? Where are you all coming from? This is my last bag. Bash on my fucking walls. Come here, you dickhead. Are we done? Please. Thank you. When I went to go check something, I realized that I actually gained the trait desensitized. I have killed so many zombies that I no longer panic when they're nearby me. So yay! In the meanwhile, I decided to quickly work on my carpentry. I really, really, really wanted level 7. I couldn't wait anymore. Oh, thank god. Right, what do we need for this? Thanks, Nails. I figured it would be a good idea to put the new water collectors near the new farm area I made, so I wouldn't have to walk a mile each time I wanted to water them. Huzzah. This will make life a lot easier. How big are they? 400, right, okay, so that's like nearly double. Very cool. After all the inconveniences of the day, probably annotated map and the zombies flooding my house, I was just deciding to call it a night. There was nothing else I really wanted to do. Go back to that annotated house then. Yeah, really getting kind of nervous with the the amount of sprinters that are suddenly appearing. As usual, I slowly went along the street killing zombies as I went, as I really didn't feel like dealing with all of them in one area, so. I was mostly using my 9mm pistol backup rounds that I got from the police station. I was completely out, out of 45 ACP at this rate, so I was relying on this. I was still finding the occasional box to keep me topped up, but I really was burning through reserves at this rate, and I really was afraid. In the later days, when these become even more rare to spawn, I'm genuinely terrified that I'm just going to be running about with an axe until even that breaks and they stop spawning, so I have no idea what I'm going to do in the future. Even after grabbing more ammo from the house, I was basically out of 9mm and only had one box of 45 ACP and a box of magnum ammo, so it was time to move on to my next gun. I guess it's time to use the fucking... the magnum. I'm not sure to how effective an improvised suppressor on a magnum is going to be, but we're about to find out. Damn! The 357 Magnum fucking dwarfs the other revolver I was using. This is one to two hits. Probably why the ammo is so rare for it. Oh, uh, and to answer your question about how effective the silencer was, uh, not really. Pretty bad. Get in. I know you're probably wondering why I don't just stab these guys, but th this has happened to me one too many times where one sprinter sneaks up behind you when you're so preoccupied hitting things, 
that I just end up dying because I get stun locked and it's just not something I want to risk anymore. So I have a tendency to shoot a couple of bullets and then always check around me. It goes through a lot of ammo, but honestly, I'd rather use the ammo than risk dying again. I spent most of the day killing zombies, and I even checked to see if I could put my silence on my M4. You could, I don't know how effective it is, but I can. But I even began using that. Even eventually I ran out of M4 ammo. I'm even out of M4 ammo. Might be resorting to my other fucking pistol now. Where did I put it? Yeah, it's the only thing I've got ammo for at this rate. I'm on my last gun with ammo. I was desperately searching their corpses, praying for even just a single box, but they had plenty of handguns on them, but they just didn't have ammo. And I was around so many corpses, I even began to get sickness from it, even if I was outside. Fortunately, there was a few short blade and hunting knives and such, so I still could use them. I was still capable of killing. I just really don't like being in melee range with the amount of sprinters that were around me. I'm completely out of ammo. Fuck. Actually, no, I'm not. I have one more, one more box. Ooh. Fuck, I'm surrounded by so much fucking bodies, I'm getting sick. There's still... It's, it's every zombie in Moldra. I'm gonna have to come back another day and finish this off. I have no ammo, I'm getting sick, and I'm starving. It's time to leave. Destined to a life of fucking fighting. I got that. What the fuck? It seems no matter where I go, I'm just completely... I'm always destined to be fighting something It's getting worse and worse. And this isn't even the population peak. But to say that I'm shitting myself currently... Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, got some more ACP runs at least. Uh, anyway, when I finally got home, I grabbed a couple more boxes of ammo for my M4. I was going to attempt this again tomorrow, and I'm really hoping this annotated house has at least something within it. I can finally get to that building. Fully equipped, and we're gonna do this. Even after clearing out the street all day for the past two days, they're still here. Already beginning to film. Look at this, the amount of dead in Pilpium, bro. <laughs> this is only the single ear. Look, look at that, dude. Look at that. Oh, there's still people around here as well. Get to the top. Fuck. Where did you even come from? I don't even know. Two clips left, and I need to be careful here. You can't even. I can't even move without. There's even more coming from other places. got about three boxes of ammo, 
and that's literally it. I've probably put about like 10 boxes of M4 ammo into this place. Endless amounts of pistol rounds till I literally had none left. So no, this was kind of a waste of time, but at least I got a ton of zombie kills. I actually find better things on the zombies' bodies than I do in annotated houses now. And hatchet. Cheeky. Oh fuck. Yeah, I really got a fence up there or something. <laughs> As for the rest of the night, I began putting down the plantations necessary for a second farm. I wasn't sure how much food I was going to need for the 100 days, but it's always good to just make sure you're always growing something. If anything goes out of date, you know, if you don't eat it in time, you can always just put it into a composter for more fertilizer. And that will help grow future plants, so it's always worth doing. The farm is done. Now we need seeds and water. I know I said farming was boring before, but after three days of risking my life and nearly dying multiple times and wasting all my ammo, I think farming is actually kind of relaxing in comparison, so I can't complain. I put down all kinds of things in this uh, general farm area. I had a lot of tomatoes, a few potatoes, I had, I think, lettuce or cabbage? I think both, actually. I had some watermelon growing as well. I was going to have quite a varied diet. I'm looking forward to it growing. This is a long ass fucking process. I then tried setting up some traps, but I wasn't aware at this time that these traps won't work unless you put them around roughly like a hundred tiles away, so these are unfortunately useless for a little Ooh. while until I discover that. Keep that food up. Even the potatoes I was already growing were ready to be harvested, but I wanted to wait a little bit longer until their next stage was there. Seed bearing. If I harvested them now, I wouldn't get seeds with the potatoes. I want it to be a renewable source of energy, so I have to wait until they're bearing seeds. This can take a little bit extra. Uh, of course, it wouldn't be a day in Simply Fishy's life without a massive horde appearing in front of him, so... Oh my god. Okay, I don't... Well, I think we found the culprit as to why they keep coming to my base. As for the rest of the day, I still needed garbage bags. Water is really necessary if you have this much farms, so I was on the hunt again. Got it. Now we can make the final rain collector we need. After making a second water collector, I placed the rest of the seeds, and then I called it tonight. At the beginning of day 26, I was watering plants, but unfortunately, for some reason, zombies just pushed my fucking house like it's flies to shit, really. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm trying to water my plants. I do not have time for such barbarism. In other news, uh, I was eating up the last of my fresh foods from, like, the freezer and stuff, so hopefully the farm will be coming in use very soon. That's the last of my fresh foods. This could be rough. But later in the day, I discovered that my plants had diseases, and you needed certain items to cure them. So I decided to take a trip to the factory for day 40 was upon us, and to stock up finally. In general, it's good to have more weapons and such, because these won't last forever, and the zombies will drop them very rarely. So it might be a good idea to stock up as much as you can. But it's getting very intimidating, as you can see. Zombies are everywhere. The plan is, I'm going to attract all the zombies in the area, get them to one, deal with the runners, and then I can deal with the walkers after, because the walkers are easy. It's the sprinters. Up there. Okay.
I spent a good few hours doing this, going back and forth, making sure they didn't get too close, and making sure that I prioritized the sprinters first. And then I finally made it into the factory, so hopefully we get some good loot here. Regular X. Another X. Once again, if a familiar theme is appearing, I'm not getting what I need, but I did get a bunch of good stuff. The two axes are going to be huge, as I'm going to need a lot of melee weapons when ammo becomes much more rare. And I did replenish a lot of the pistol ammo I lost, but I did lose a lot of M4 ammo for it. But at least it's something. I'm the guinea pig, basically. Oh, I'm smoked, I'm smoked, I'm... On day 27, I was out of fresh food, and my potatoes were not on seed-bearing stages yet. I didn't really feel like going into my imperishables. That was going to be an emergency backup if anything bad ever happened. So I began to eat some of the vegetables straight from the ground. I just need to start eating them straight from the fucking ground at this rate. They're taking long to get to the seed-bearing stages, so it's whatever. I'll eat the diseased ones first, because they have the lowest harvest. But yeah. In the meanwhile, I decided to make some crates so that I could store my weapons and different sorts of things, a bit of organization, and I could clearly see what I made over the past 27 days. I do love sorting items, it is my favorite pastime. Fun fun, fun fun, fun 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 fun. I killed a really peculiar zombie. M14, is it, does he have an M... Bountiful? AK-47 ammo, M14 mags, cheese, and a protein bar. That's 60 hunger? And minus 35 on happiness. Jesus. Perhaps I should try fishing. We have a fishing rod. We have worms for bait. I can make a spear if need be. Let's give this a shot. I decided to go to a body of water near the bottom of Maldra. I wanted to try and do some fishing. It's not something I would really ever used to do. I mostly just stick to farming. But I wanted a high calorie food, as well as a backup if something did go wrong. I was in the need of fresh food anyway, so it was just what I thought was a good idea to try. I need both of these. And a wrench. Holy shit, we're gonna pay our car now. I did loot on the way. I found some police cruisers I really wanted to check, but I kind of got overwhelmed. Too many. <clears throat> Get through. Oh, motherfucker. Go! Get out of the way, motherfuckers. Seems the only option is... Walking. I pretty much spent the entire day doing this until... Basically, I ran out of bait. Okay. And heavy as fuck. Big pike. What the fuck? I caught a couple of very, very big fishes. Very luckily. 5,000 calories is pretty insane. Uh, I took them back to the house, and I mean, to me, that was a pretty successful day. The day was a good day. In the morning, I wanted to cook some of the fish that I caught. This is a Big fucking fish, man. I can't even fit this in the goddamn oven. <laughs> I need to make a vampire. <laughs> I've never had that before. God damn, that's a meal. No, we can't. We can't be having all that. Jesus. I'll keep me going for the next couple of days at least. Fuck you know. Fortunately, I won't have to actually indulge in nothing but fish, cause the farm was finally coming to completion. Seed bearing. We done it. We actually got that. 58. And that's only one fucking line of them, too. That's so good. I think I think I can make it to 100 days if I just don't die being overwhelmed yet. Hell, the fucking freezer's filled with them. I may have overestimated how much crops I needed to plant. With this farm alone, I was probably going to have enough to make it probably even like 60 days. I'm going to keep growing them anyway, just in case. You never know. 
Plus, we might even make it to day 200 if we keep this up, but first things first, right? 136. That's over like 200. Like, Jesus. I need a second fridge. Better go get that second fridge then. Fortunately, unlike my last episode, I was prepared for how heavy the fridge was. If you remember that, it was quite a struggle. Retro boom, they make it boom. I'm getting a distinct feeling of deja vu. As for the rest of the day, I went to find more garbage bags, rotten food for a composter, and then I found an extra generator. A composter turns rotten food into fertilizer, which can help your plants grow quicker, or is it higher yields? I forget. It might be both. I don't remember distinctly, but it's one of those. On day 29, I really wanted to start taking engine parts from cars to help rebuild my current car. It has taken quite a beating over the past couple of weeks. Unfortunately, that requires level 5 mechanics, so I had to train up first. But first, I wanted to use the daylight to go explore a little more. It was approaching day 40, and that's kind of where you don't want to be out anymore. I guess there's nothing here in this boarded up house again. This is very evidently supposed to be a survivor house. Another... Another bat. Just moving even tiny spaces at this rate, I'm hitting things so much I'm even exhausting myself, it's crazy. I found some cars that had some healthy engines, so of course I needed to take the parts away from that so I could repair my main car. I found this is a successful day. A ton of kills and I got my car repaired to a decent extent. Let's have a look. Okay, not quite decent, but... During my loot runs today, I was able to actually get another water barrel, which is perfect. If it ever has a drought, at least I'll have a large supply of water. Well, if it ever rains, I should be good. Though, getting kind of worried. I have, like, no water left whatsoever. Um... I'm applying. I need to repair this fucking door. Tomorrow is the peak population day, so... I think tomorrow we kind of have to make it the final arrangement. So I think we have to get our gas set up. And I think we just have to lock ourselves off and pray we can make it for the 30 days with the food we've got. Because as soon as it gets to people, as soon as it gets to day 40, like, I'm going to start burning through ammo like nothing because I can't actually engage in melee fights anymore. Because it's going to, yeah, we're going to have to make our final arrangements really soon. On day 30, I went to go set up the generator at the gas station so I could get more fuel. Generator. All right, time to go die at the gas station. Let me move this generator onto the chair. Oh. I went to go quickly put down the generator at the gas station. I wasn't expecting to be able to stay here for very long, because you will very quickly be overwhelmed by all the zombies flooding from all areas. It's why I normally slowly move down the road and take them out one by one. Oh my god, there is so fucking many. Oh my Yeah, this is the last time I'm coming out. This is this is this is it. This is this is ridiculous. I cleared this not that long ago and it's filled up to Look at this! Jesus I'm not going to make you sit through another montage of me killing zombies again, but I spent about two to three hours doing this and I finally got this thing set up so I could fuel up. I don't know if this is going to be enough to last us two months, but I think the other cars at the base have fuel in them. And we probably won't have to leave anytime soon anyway. We're set up for 70 days, I think. So I don't need to come out again, because this is already hard enough. Any harder and... I think I'm just dead. I really didn't want to come back here at all. I was going to have to invest so much ammunition in order to even get there. It just wasn't worth it. So I filled up the generator, the gas can, and the car itself. And I should have enough to last me 70 more days. If I don't, then there's cars around the area that I can basically withdraw fuel from anyway. Including the main car, which I won't be using very much anyway, so... Let's hope this plan works out.
Unfortunately, during this trip, I was basically out of M4 ammunition, and I was going to be relying on my 308 rifle to get most things done. I had barely any shotgun ammo, but on, I did have a generous supply of pistol rounds due to how much I was using the M4, which is nice, but I'm really hoping this 308 can last me till at least day 50 or 60, but it wasn't looking good. I'm going to try and save it as much as I can, but I'm going to be very quickly overrun on day 60 and stuff with the amount of zombies sprinting at me. I can't afford to really play safe. You serve me well, Mr. M4. Time for you to return. Going to be using this big fuck-off rifle, whatever it is. Then, disaster completely struck. Uh, a few of you may know from a community post I made, basically my power went out and I lost everything in my backpack. I'll let past Fishy explain. Okay, so I'm having a mild problem. Uh, recently my power went out about four or five times while I was playing Zomboid, and I don't have my backpack or, or shit anymore. I think I, dro I dropped them around about here. I was exercising and just keeping an eye out for zombies, and now I physically am incapable of finding them, so... Forgive me for this, I may have to cheat my items back in, because I have no idea what's happened, but they don't exist anymore. They don't- they're, they're nowhere to be found. I don't even remember all the things that I had, but I, th I think I'm gonna have to kind of cheat my way and get these items back. Because that's a tad unfair. I don't know about you guys, but this is, um, this is kind of shitty. I have no idea where I put them. As a matter of fact, I, I, I had them down upstairs. I know that for a fact, but they're not here anymore. They've disappeared. Meaning I've lost about 80% of the items I had on me, so forgive me. I... I'm afraid I'm going to have to spawn my items back in. If this bothers you, I apologize, but I thought I'd... I thought I'd just be honest, because, um, a lot of people seem to be complaining, but this is, this, this is just what's happened. I was exercising, I didn't have my backpack on me, my power went out and the world didn't save properly, so now I am... I am without about 90% of the items I had. I apologize. But basically, if you didn't catch that, I was exercising and my power cut out due to a storm about four or five times. When I loaded back into Zomboid, the day reset, I had none of the items on me because I dropped my backpack and such, because when you exercise, you drop it. And basically, yeah, I lost absolutely everything. I don't know what everything I had, so I'm only going to be able to spawn in about like 50 to like 80% of the items I had, but I want to give myself back, you know, the tools that I had, because I'm not going to be able to find it elsewhere. Like, yeah, it's just, it's really shitty. Man, I can't believe I have to do this. Oh, the joys of making Zomboid videos. After doing all of that, uh, I read some books for tailoring and I began to level it up a little bit. It's going to be necessary because I'm going to need some pretty hefty armor just in the off chance that day 60 when infection's on and I accidentally take a bite. It's going to be the best chance I have in order to avoid being infected. The ring. Which we got. What does this need? Oh. Level 3 Alice backpack, apparently. Damn, look at all that. Look at all these slots, my dude. I began exercising before bed each night now, as I really wanted to get the fitness level up, just in the off chance that I needed to run the fuck away. High percentage of sprinters, high chance of needing to run. Officially, January is now over, and we're in February. We have successfully survived our first month. Other than that, I discovered that there was actually a body of water much closer to me than I realized, so I could always just go there for fishing, so I intended to do that. Since food seems to be uh, in the risky department currently due to it not raining at all, it might be worth exploring fishing a bit more. Let's avoid fighting if we have to. Tired all of a sudden. Why, why am I tired? I just woke up. Never, let's go nap, I guess. This random zombie had a pretty cool vest. Did it replace something? I mean, I guess it replaces the other vest I lost. There was quite a large group near the pond. I had to be really careful here because with a bunch of trees, you can kind of get jumped very quickly. This was a bad idea. Fuck's sake. Yeah. 
I don't know why, I had this genius idea to set up a few log walls around me just in the off chance that when I sped up time I didn't get bitten on the neck from a zombie going a million miles per hour. I mean, I mean, I guess in hindsight it's a good idea, I don't know. It could have been, it could have been done better. Gives me a bit of privacy just in case something fucking comes up behind me, which usually does. Pretty much done this until I run out of bait again. Fishies. Unfortunately, I ran out of bait and I didn't even get a single fish out of it, but I guess that's kind of what happens when you have level zero fishing. On the bright side though, for the first time in a month, I had a proper wash, or well, a relatively proper wash. I was completely covered in blood and I was dirty as hell, so I figured I'd give my guy a break. There's a war, proper wash I've had in like a month. <laughs> So after a relatively unsuccessful day of fishing, it called it a day. On day 33, I really needed worms for fishing, so I began to forage, not only to level the skill and find food as I'd done it, but I could also find worms doing this, so figured I'd give it a go. Beauty bearing? I didn't really find any worms, but for some reason, foraging is really cool. I'm actually kind of fond of it. Relaxing and I actually have fun with it. Which is really weird, because I don't enjoy farming and shit, usually. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'd be excited there, you bastard. On the bright side, it is snowing again, so the farm actually might have some fucking hope. But, fuck it. I've got nothing else to do. May as well make myself useful. Eventually I just discovered I was having no luck with foraging for worms, so I just decided to start digging the ground. This is the most reliable way to get it. Sad, really. I kind of wanted to forage for them, but this'll do. Yeah, I've got seven worms. That just saved me like seven years of my life. Using the newly found worms, I went back to fishing. Oh damn! Oh, I got, I got something. Small pike, a big pike, and shoes. And a medium base, okay. Damn, that's pretty good. But I have no problem. For the next couple of days, I should be fine now. I don't want to eat into my potatoes all the time, so... In the off chance, I run out of high calorie food. Fish is going to be very good to have. Well, the water's back, basically, so... I can start a farm again if I need to. But I still got that second other farm to deal with, so maybe I'll finish that and then I'll begin starting crops again. Or something. Early on day 34, I went to go check all my traits to see, after a month, of how I progressed. I'm gathering a lot of traits by the end of this. I've even got Nervous Wreck. Not all of them are good, but like... I'm just getting all the good benefits now. I think that, actually, I think that one's because of my ADHD. I think this one's ADHD as well, so that like kind of goes from like the bad one to the good one. On and off. I got desensitized. I got ideal weight. I don't know how I got that, but it's really useful because of my bloat trait. So that kind of helps a lot. I don't know how I ended up with that. So... Yeah, things are going well. Shortly after, I went to go and top up the water on my second farm. Seed-bearing lettuce. They're already done. Damn, they grow fucking quick. Yeah, I might be wrong about this whole food situation. I didn't really see this grow so insanely quick. Yeah, I may have overgrown just a tad bit. I have so much food now. Might have overestimated how much food I need. I mean, better to have it and not need it. I'm gonna need another fridge. I need a third fridge. I can. Let's go get another fridge. <laughs> we got three fridges going. <laughs> I also began to level my tailoring as well. I really want to get this as high as possible. I actually did this until I physically passed out on the floor. Oh, I just passed out. <laughs> Oops. Day 35, I wanted to build up my second floor a bit more with some fences. I kept falling off of it, so I didn't really want to, uh, you know, do that. <laughs> it's probably for the best. As a matter of fact, for the next, like, three or four days, I basically just leveled tailoring, I exercised, and I kept an eye on the farms.
Day 39 began like any other. I chilled at the base, killing zombies, leveling tailoring, leveling farming, leveling my fitness skill. I wasn't prepared for the disaster that was awaiting me. If you made it this far into the video, I really appreciate you spending your valuable time watching this video. If you want to see more, please subscribe and leave a comment for me. If you're feeling generous enough to support the content even further, check out my Discord, my Twitch, my Patreon, or even consider becoming a YouTube member. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.